Yeah. All right, guys, welcome back to part two of our conversation with Brett and Tack. Um, we're talking about Americans abroad, particularly national team players abroad. There's over 30 guys in Europe this year. We're not going to talk about every single last one. We're going to talk about the ones in the top six leagues that are relevant. So, for example, Timothy Chandler and Emmanuel Sabi might be in top five leagues, but they're not relevant to the USMNT discussion. So we're mainly going to talk about the guys that either are or have a chance to be in the USMNT. Um, and... Uh, Let's just get into it, guys. Yeah, I think it'd be really cool that, that we're doing this because in mid-season or at the end of the season, we'll have like a, a baseline of expectations that we laid down before anything started this season of like how we can rank the success or failure of an individual player. So I think it's yeah. cool to doing this. So we're going to talk about with each player, what does success look like? And, and he'll try to hold them to that standard or at least go, well, they didn't hit what we think is success for them. And we might want to go per league. Want to do it per yeah. league. Yeah. So we're going to start with the Premier League. Um, let's start with Chris Richards. I, I also going to throw out that I think it'd be cool because I've been granted really cool access and, and gotten to know some of these guys. I'm going to throw in a little some tidbits for your audience of like maybe something personal that I know about each player or whatever and just make it interesting. Sure. Mm -hmm. That sounds good. Uh, Chris Richards won a starting spot under a uh, former Wolfsburg manager whose name suddenly escapes me, uh, took over Crystal Palace last year and was part of the back three. Um, what does success look like for him? Because if he stays as a starter and plays well, that's not much better than he did last year, right? It's well, better because he only did half of last year. Like that. I guess. He didn't year. start in the beginning of the season and he was played out of position for a good amount of games. Towards the end, when Mark Gehi got injured, yeah. he became a lock on the center back position. Apparently, Mark Gehi, not confirmed right now, but it looks like he's going to Newcastle. So if Gehi leaving and Chris Richards coming off a season where he got that starting spot, I think a successful season is locked and started, 30-plus games probably starting, playing well and and, and looking good. Yeah. I, I, I think that's a successful season. I agree. At the center back position, I agree. At the center, center back, back position, back yeah. Position. Whether it's a back three or a back four, Very because, nice. you know, the coach does like a back three. We'll see how he ends up using him this year. But I agree with you as as a defender, as a center back. When you say uh, 30 starts, do you mean – you can't mean for the Premier League. You just mean total. I mean, most of them would be in the Premier League. Most would be – um, but, but, like, if you're a center back, starting 30 out of 38 games, as long as you're healthy – that, that's not too hard as a center back because they also don't have Europa League or, or Champions League. So it's yeah. it's very possible that he could get 30 games if, if he's healthy. Yeah. All right. I, I think that's, that's a fair barometer for success for Chris. Yeah. All right. Uh, Tyler Adams. This is a tough one. You haven't seen him play for almost two years. Just walk. If he walks, it's no, I'm joking. <laughs> I think staying healthy and being a regular contributor to Burnmouth would be success. Wait, real quick, just for each guy, I'm going to throw like 30 to 20, 10 seconds. Oh, yeah, yeah, go for it. So Chris is like just just, just getting to know him a little bit. Like he's he's kind of like the a little bit like the Eunice Musa style of like seemingly always happy and smiling, like a guy that you that is just like an infectious character, infectious personality. Um, down to like go out with the crew, like the, 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 the part of the team that goes out and parties, he's part of that crew, but he always has his girlfriend and he has like a really serious relationship that he seems to take very seriously and she is awesome. So like, he's one of the guys that, that's kind of locked down in a relationship, but in a good way, like maybe one of the best relationships I, I, I've, I've seen in a while. They seem really cool together and his parents are always around. So he's very like family and relationship oriented, but also part of like the, the party crew and just, and a, and a big dude, he's bigger even in person, I think, than you think on, on TV, he might be the biggest guy on the team. It seems like to me, um, bigger than McKinney. Oh yeah, yeah. He, Chris has got to be four inches. Well, maybe not. he's McKinney small. Yeah, he definitely seems bigger than McKinney though. Like uh -huh. I think <laughs> we'll do fake fights. I think in a fake fight, Chris would probably beat anybody's ass on the team. I could, I could be wrong. Like I wouldn't want to go up against CCV, but I, I would put Chris in like way up on the top of betting odds. Okay. Uh, that's my Chris Richards. Nice, nice. Uh, I want to ask you, and I, I know you know a lot, a lot of these players now, but what do you make of the difference between his performances for Crystal Palace and for the U.S. this summer? Because he was one of the players that wasn't great. I know. I, I don't. I, it's like you know, look, you got the Geo who does the opposite. You got who knows what goes into that. Yeah, it could be random. It could be. I don't. I don't know. Yeah, but I, I presume he's going to be our number one center back so let's just root that he gets a lot of playing time and that he plays well for the usmnt because we are really reliant on him 
Yeah. Tyler Adams. Underdog Fantasy Sports is back with a new and improved pick'em game across all sports that makes it easy to play fantasy sports with just a few clicks. Each sport allows you to build a parlay that includes between two and five predictions about the outcomes of player projections. As you would expect, the more picks you include, the greater the potential payout. Don't go crazy with it and play responsibly, but adding a few bucks here and there to a game gives it a little more excitement and stakes. Use my promo code 11YANKS or click the link in the description to start playing and Underdog will match whatever you put in your account up to $100. Enjoy! Who wants to go first? He's out for the first two months? At least. Yeah. I would say success for him is starting 60% of games after he comes back from this injury and playing the way that Tyler Adams typically plays. To me, that he just needs a rebuilding season. Like he doesn't have to be like, you know, six of the year. He just needs to like get back to Tyler Adams, and I would call that a success. Yeah, I agree. I'd call it regular contributor. You know, even yeah. if he doesn't start every game, but he starts at least half, and then is a regular off the bench in the other half, and and healthy and playing well, I'll take it. Yeah, I'm not gonna put any numbers into it. Sixty percent, fifty percent, because I don't also don't know when he's gonna come back. Right? Last time they said he was gonna come back in October, and he didn't come back till March. Okay. So I'll say this: once he's back, as long as he gets consistent minutes, whether it is starting or off the, if he gets thirty minutes off the bench for half of the season, but he's healthy and playing well when he comes off the bench, I think this is a season for Tyler to have continuity over anything else. So as long as he's playing. Obviously, for and then for 2026, we want him to come into the World Cup playing a lot, being good. But right now, be healthy. Just get healthy. That's I, it. I, I saw Tyler in, I think it was Dallas, like a year ago. I don't know. He was injured. He was just coming back from injury. He was playing for the USMNT. And then Bournemouth had him cleared for 90 minutes. And he hadn't played in like, this is after his hamstring. He hadn't played for Bournemouth in like forever. And I was talking to him briefly, just a couple minutes. He, he, Real quick on Tyler Adams, like definitely a fucking leader. That guy, he's he's part of the crew that kind of stays back and smokes cigars and chills and doesn't go to like the after party, which you'd imagine. But he's like, dude, that guy's a natural leader. Um, but he told me, he's like, oh, yeah, when I get back to Bournemouth, I'm cleared for 90. And I wanted to say, but it's hard to like look at Tyler Adams and give him your opinion on something that he probably gives two fucks about. But I literally wanted to say that sounds crazy to me. And I didn't. And, you know, obviously, not that it, not that if I did, he would have cared or done anything different. And he went back and played freaking 90 and got hurt like the first That game. was probably March. Yeah, yeah I think it was March, March in Dallas. Yeah. Gotcha. What was that, Nations League? Yeah, um, Nations League. Man, I just couldn't believe him. He was, he was pumped. And he's like, I'm going to go 90. I'm like, oh, my God. Like, you've been out for like a year, bro. But, you know, yeah. soccer players in their 20s, like, they think they're, you know, they're invincible. They're going to go 90. They're going to go 90. Yeah, surprising the coaches don't be like, no, sit down. <laughs> that surprised me. I, I blame you. You can't blame the players, in my mind. Any player is going to play if you let them. Uh, yeah. Let's just hope that they treat them right and yeah. get back to Tyler Adams. Anyway, this is an interesting one now. Anthony Robinson, who had a very successful year for Fulham last season, is success just continuity for him? Mm -hmm. For me, yes. I don't think we can expect more than last year. So let's just say one more year like that, because then he really establishes himself as like a as an elite uh, left wing. I mean, left back, like elite. And we don't have many elite players. I I would say defensively elite. I I don't know from an attacking perspective. I'm not sold on Anthony Robinson. I think Fulham has figured out how to use him. Don't get him too involved in the build out. They build out very centrally. They force the opponent to squeeze and then they'll shunt it wide him and have him put a cross in and sometimes it's a good cross always low crosses he can't right. cross like a, a lobbed cross right but you, but you you notice, he, used to try, out, he used to try a lot of lob crosses and now he does low i think he's yeah. just learned cut back I, think I think it's a good element of his game but he's yeah, but I think they, they figured out what his strengths and weaknesses are. And I think that's something we never really have done with the U.S. is understanding like when you want him to be a key part of your build out schemes and your attack, it's the wrong role for him. Would you, would you call Trent Alexander an elite right back? Uh, I would say from an attacking perspective. I knew you were going to say that, but I was trying to trick you into not separating attack. Look, no, you can you be, have to. My point is you can be elite and not be elite in both categories. I think he's an elite left back. I think overall. 
you know? what I, what I think of a Rob is like if he's with a team like Fulham that understands how to utilize him defensively, he improved a lot over the years and he's very fast, very strong. He can, because again, playing defense in soccer is easier than attacking. If you have a good understanding of the game, athleticism, you can play decent defense. On the ball, a Rob is not good in tight spaces, but if you catch him on a run down the flank and just have him whip in a quick cross, yeah. his crosses are very dangerous when when they go. That that's how he got, I think, all of his assists with Fulham. Yeah, he has like six or seven assists. I don't think I think we're discounting him offensively because I agree. If you're if you're once you're up at the, in the final third and the whole team's up there, he's not, you know, where you want him to be yet. But getting from the to the final third with him, elite. Just streaking down the left side with the ball, or or, or I mean, you know, I think we're talking about two different things. In the build out, no, he's terrible. But well, he doesn't he doesn't work well. Like for example, with Burhalter really system, good. not too much. He needs a very fast paced system in transition. Um, it depends. I, I think success for me with A Rob, and again, I, I don't want to get caught in terminology, right? We're going to get into like world class, elite, good, very good. Each person, like, it depends because you can go can go to Brad and say, who else is elite? And then he sees that player as elite. I'm like, but that to me is a normal player. It's how we see it. I think success for me for him this season, in a more broad term, is continue to be a very good Premier League fullback which is the best league in the world. He was really good for Fulham last season. He was probably a top 10 left back in the league. I think that's very fair to say. Would you agree yeah. with that? Yeah. So yeah. continue yeah. to be a top 10 left back in the best league in the world. Stay healthy. If he does that, I think that's about his level. If he can continue to do that for multiple years, that's a very good career. Okay. How? How? Where would he have to be in the Prem for you to call him elite? Top six? Well, elite goes more to like where you are top wise because sometimes you can be in a system that adjusts for you. There are players that like you get a messy Neymar, they'll fit in any team and they're up there world class players. But I guess elite would be in the category of let's say top it, six. Be more of like his player profile. It's like could a can, can you throw a Rob and he'll work in any team in the Premier League, even even as a back? And no, there's some teams that just won't work for him. It just won't work. And I'm not saying like, oh, Manchester City, like they rumored. I don't think he can play for Manchester City, for example. I'm even saying for different styles of play, a team that's more possession based. I don't think it suits his game very well. I, I tried. I tried. But I'm yeah. Not, I'm not I mean, it's not, it's not a crazy take. I mean, the guy is is a top 10 left back in the Premier League. But I would put it this way. He's a top 10 left back in the Premier League, but he's far from being a top 10 left back in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think trying to define A-Rob is a zero sum game because he has limitations. He's very good at some things and not great at others. Fulham has figured out how to enhance what he's really good at and keep him away from doing the things he's not good at. And that's great coaching and that's great use of a player. So maybe success is another year like last year, but great success would be adding an element to his game as well. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if at 27, this is his yeah. prime. Can he add that? I don't personally- I think he added both crosses last year. So I was- I'm fine with where he is right now. I'm fine. Yeah. yeah, no, that would good. be success for me too. Yeah. yeah. All right. Anything on A Rob from just a player point of view? The one of the guys that goes out, you know. Yeah, I can see um, that. And like, I'd say like, you know, the cool crew guy. Like, he's a good-looking dude, and and uh, you know, a nice nice guy. Is he? He strikes me like I met a bunch of his friends, and they were all from Liverpool. Is he British? He's English. Yeah. English. Yeah, yeah. So he's got like a bit of an English accent thing going on. But you know, just like. Chill, cool guy. Not not much, but certainly nothing. Like, cool guy to hang out with. Yeah. But no cool stories or anything. Sorry. That's fine. Uh, Matt Turner. There are rumors that he is leaving Forrest for the Bundesliga. We will see if those rumors are true. Personally, I think success for Matt Turner means leaving Nottingham Forest and going somewhere where he can play, whether that's the championship or MLS or the Bundesliga, wherever it is. Is it success if he was in the MLS? I don't know, man. I think playing for a goalkeeper, playing is better than sitting on the bench. That's my per especially for a team like he looked better for the national team when he played in MLS. It's a low bar. If you're telling me if he comes to the MLS and plays every game, you're gonna be like, that was a successful season for Matt Turner. I don't know. Because but compared to right now, because well, he's in such a bad more spot. successful than last year, fine. But that's not success necessarily. But what, what do we think is his level actually? What do we think is Matt Turner's level? I think that's probably the best question because I, I, I would everything. say success bottom. would be for him to find his level. Yeah, I would say I would say bottom tier Bundesliga uh Liga, 
mid table Liga, low, low, low table Liga, like starting in the top five to me would be successful for Matt Turner. Yeah, I agree. I don't expect. Oh, him no. to be yeah, if he does that, it's successful for sure. For sure. Yeah. But I think he has to find a team that doesn't want to play out of the back because yes. that's the problem with Turner. Right? So, so in that conversation at the airport in, in Mykonos, I'm always pitching the U.S. guys. So, you yeah. know, all my questions were related to that. And one of the owners of a of a team said right in front of the sporting director of Nottingham Forest, "Yeah, but Matt can't play out, play out the back with his feet." And I was like, "Yeah, Dude, don't talk shit right in front of the sporting." And you director. couldn't argue back, right? <laughs> I, I always get everybody's back, but I mean, in the back of my mind, I was like, so, you know, the, the, the fact is, is like, not, it's not just the U.S. fans that kind of think that, that he has a reputation, unfortunately, in Europe, it sounds like, for that. So, but I still think because he's such a good st stop blocker, um, shot blocker, that he could play in a top five league consistently just maybe I not he's the he's a good goalkeeper for the efl championship too they play a lot of brexit ball there and 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 you need a shot stopper he can play for like the top tier teams of I, the I would consider that a success too yeah, if he goes to a team that's fighting for promotion that's not bad top 10 team in the championship bottom 10 team in liga or bundesliga or Serie A. i would consider all that success yeah agreed agreed on all accounts all right so that wraps up the prem well do we want to talk about uh what's his name at burnley uh they got relegated Kole oh that's right yeah never mind my bad Kole Osho. they got relegated Osho. and we don't even know if we're gonna can get we, can we just say that would be a success if he if he signs for the usmnt let's just call that a success commits commits yeah yeah, yeah no it would be for sure him and diego coaching are the two guys that yeah. i have my most of my focus on as far as and i know that i know they're on the certainly the radar of, of us soccer more than the radar but I really hope that him and coach and coaching in yeah. particular come. Yeah, coaching is like the only goalkeeper in our entire pool, including youth pool, that can play with his feet. What is going on? Is the risk that he signs for Spain because he's lived in Spain for so long? I guess. Well, Barcelona's pressing him, right? Because he's American. Yeah, yeah. he can sign for Spain, from what I understand. Doesn't yeah. it sound like a Musiala situation with Bayern? Remember they pressed him to play for Germany because he was with Bayern instead of England. Yeah. Remember that. But what he has to consider, in my opinion, is, is he going to beat out Unai Simon anytime soon? Simon is 27. They also have other guys behind Simon that he may or may not be better than. Well, also, so, don't you, can't you just have allegiance to the fucking country you grew up in, even if it's not as good of a situation? I mean, sure. I hope that's so. What I, that's what I would hope. I hope so. But well, if, he might he might want to play for the U.S. We don't know. He might we be. don't know. Yeah. Hmm. We don't know. We'll see. We, we anyway. really can't afford to lose him, in my opinion. No, um, no that would be a, a great... So get, great, get. let's move on to the Bundesliga now, and we'll start with Joe Scally. Want me to go first? Yeah, anyone. I watched a lot of Scally last season. He was he played a very few amount of games as a center back in the back three. Didn't look good. Uh, and as a wing back, a lot of ups and downs. It, I don't want to say it this way, but it almost seemed like he regressed from the season before where he was a bit more consistent. He wasn't terrible by any means. And he got benched, got back to starting 11. I would say for Joe Scali, if he can be a consistent starter, not error prone, not shaky in that back line for Gladbach, playing the Bundesliga and like he had a rock solid season, to me, that's successful. And I, I don't, because again, like going forward, I don't think he's going to become this like amazing right wing back that can put in crosses combined. But if he can be really good defending, because we already have Dest, right? We have Dest. If he can be really good defensive, not shaky, that'll be progress to me, and that's fine. I mean, Gladbach's like a mid-table Bundesliga team. I, I, that's success for me. Wait, 20, 20 starts, 25 starts? Yeah, because they have less games. They have less games yeah, there. I agree. Yeah, they were 34. Yeah. Right. That's exactly my bar. And then hopefully offensively, he's shown sparks before. Maybe he adds to that over the course of he the He can year. cross the ball if you give him time and space, but he's just not great in combination, you know. Which is fine. I mean, he's probably one of the few Americans that came out of this summer with his head held high. He locked down some agree. great players this summer. I totally agree. Yeah, you he know? had a great summer. And we forget he is 21. This, this is He's far from his prime, Joe Scally. It's not like, you know, he's been around since he was 18, so we forget how young he is. He's the same age as Pepe. So yeah, it's something to consider, I guess. Yeah, it's exciting to have two right backs like this guy. And as may I add, he was one of the few during the Copa America. He actually wasn't bad in the Copa America. No, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. This oh. summer, he was actually good. 
No. He locked down yeah. Lewis, uh, uh, well, Darwin, for sure. I'd say he locked him down. Mostly. Not Diaz. That one, no one locked him down. <laughs> no, but even in that game, he was he, he had run up against him many times, 1v1, and won that duel. He played well against Vinicius. And Vinicius mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, he had maybe the best summer of anybody. Um, yeah. Balogun. Balogun was the best one, I think. Okay, I well. think Scali was better, yeah. actually. Yeah, I thought too. Balogun was better. It's easier uh, to it's easier to defend Pete. I always go by that rule. But Balogun, so the diff. Okay, I think the way I'm classifying this is going from a guy who we didn't even really want to start, like we didn't trust to start, to be one of the top two players in the starting eleven. Uh, that was the biggest, the most impressive jump, most team. overachiever. Yeah, from yeah. expectations to what we got. But they are the top two for this summer. I I agree with yeah. that. Um, okay, yeah, I think we agree on on Scali. Um. Let's move over to Leonard Maloney. Don't know I, I, enough. Let's say, yeah, don't know enough. I, I, I would say the same as last season. He, he was a locked-in starter at the six for Heidenheim, and they were a team that was supposed to fight for relegation, and they finished mid-table. If he can continue to start, pro, I think he will become their captain this season too. He's one of the three guys in contention to be captain. Yeah, one so maybe guys. be captain, continue to start, and stay in the Bundesliga. Th to me, that would be it. And extra bonus would be become a center back. <laughs> oh yeah, we need those. We need he center played back. before. He has played a center back. In yeah, the he played center back for Dortmund. Yeah, hmm. it's crazy how deep our six is now from where it used to be. Um, yeah. yeah, I would agree with all that. I, you guys know more than me on him, I, but uh, sounds good. Mm -hmm. Let's do our boy Kevin Paredes. Um, he had what three goals? No, sorry, not three goals. He had yeah, three goals. Three goals. Is he getting loaned out? Is he, he's on Wolfsburg. Wolfsburg. He's staying. He's staying. He's on Wolfsburg yeah, this, this season. Starting half the games? That's I think he started this had. season half the games. Right? Yeah, he started already half the games. What I want from Paredes this season is to become more consistently dangerous. And I mean that because oftentimes he was not bad. Like he looks like he can hang in the Bundesliga, but he wasn't really a threat too often. And I think that's okay for a 21-year-old you know, it, it, it's been two years now, so I want him to really take that step to becoming more consistently dangerous, even if it's five goals, five assists. Yeah, let's set a goals assists uh, mark. And, and locked in starter, I would say start maybe like 25 to 28 games in the Bundesliga. Yeah, I think if you start 70% or more of their games, you're pretty much yeah. a locked in starter. I'm yeah. going to go seven goal contributions would be success. Um, and seven to ten, yeah, I would go with that too. I'm going to put ten. I'm going to set a higher benchmark for him. Pretty high, but all right, I'm going to go seven. If you're starting every game as a winger, it depends where he plays too, because toward the end of Wolfsburg, he played as a left back, and you could make the argument mm -hmm. that he might be end up being a better left back long term than than winger. <laughs> well, we could use a left back. Um, okay, well then seven is going to be high, but if he's a winger, yeah. seven. If he's a left back, let's just say starting. 20 let's i think starting more than half the games in the bundesliga at that age is awesome so that that's my standard okay i, I said mine too i think 70 percent because i think we need to see progress from him and, and he he made good progress last season he's making progress every season maybe yeah. maybe expect a breakout season where it's like oh this guy actually arrived now he's like legitimate here yeah but progress if he wants to play in the world cup he needs to have a breakout season yes yeah um but he looked on the Olympics, but that's a different caliber of yeah, yeah. player. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's talk about, I forgot, John Brooks. Well, he's technically not in the Bundesliga he's not right relevant now. To the, well, he could be relevant to the, to the team if there's a new manager, I suppose. He's yeah. unemployed. He's unemployed. So success for John Brooks is finding a, a, a club in a top five league and becoming a starter again. Yeah, finding mid, a club before Burhalter finds one. Mid-table club in a top five league and being a perennial starter. Yeah. Wait, wait, let me ask you guys one thing. Would it be not a success if he gets a – he signs for a top three Eredivisie club, for example? No. You don't think so? Like a Feyenoord, Ajax, or PSV? Like fighting for the title, maybe some Europa League, Champions League, playing a lot on the ball like he's good at? I wouldn't want to judge a defender if I was a manager of the U.S. men's national team and I'm trying to judge who, who to bring to like a, a really important roster. I wouldn't – the people he's going up against, it's not, no, I'd rather see somebody in mid table or even low table top five league than a, than a, than a top team. It's like, it's like trying to judge a CCV. It's tough. You know, that's fair. So we exclude miles and Zimmerman now. 
Well, from the A roster, yeah. They've been yeah, yeah. Good. So, yeah. so oh, no, no, that's fair. No, that's fair. That's fair. I asked that with Brooks because, yeah, he would get technically games in the Champions League probably or, or Europa League. But, yeah, it's just like Carter Vickers. He does play there. If he wants the chance of, of, of coming to the World Cup, let's just, I'm not saying it's realistic. Yeah. Really, I'm just saying if he wants the chance, he has to be in a top five league kicking ass. I don't care what you do on Feyenoord. You're not getting to the World Cup. I don't think so. Brooks has been heavily defended because of how he was treated by Burhalter, but I, it's very fair to say this last year, especially, he was very up and down. Like he'd have a very good game and then an awful game, and there's a reason why Hoffenheim let him go. So for me, unless he gets back to a top five league and starts to show consistency, I don't have him in my national team pool. I don't think he's shown enough right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Mm -hmm. um, let's move on to Giovanni. Reina, for me, the number one USMNT player that most needs a good season. This is it for Gio. I'm done defending him. I've defended him a lot for lots of different reasons. Coming off the injuries, I think people expected too much. I think all of the media circus around Burhalter was not good for him. But now it's on him. He needs to deliver. Whether he stays at Dortmund or whether he goes somewhere else, no more excuses for Gio Reina. It's time to show up. And for me, success looks like being a regular contributor. So he doesn't have to be a locked-in starter for Dortmund. But if he starts half their games and comes off the bench in the other half and is regularly contributing, I'm going to say a minimum of 15 goal contributions, then that's a success. You think he's staying at Dortmund? I don't know. It's, I mean, he started today for them. Of course, there was a lot of subs he was starting with. Okay. Let's say he doesn't. Know. Where, where would you want him to land as far as what, what would you? La Liga or Serie A? Mid-table? Probably. Yeah, like Fiorentina, yeah. for example, I think could be a good spot for him. I, you I, know? I think he's the most enigmatic player in our, in our pool. I, I, I don't understand how he can be as good as he is and dominate for the U.S. men's national team and then not get playing time in Europe. It makes no sense to me. The only and – and I've heard firsthand from people that have um, – worked with him that it's not his attitude his attitude is fine he's a and i've met him the guy is like it seems like really That's an interesting point of view because we hear this from a lot of people it's his attitude he's a stinky attitude blah, blah, blah. i've heard the opposite from people that know i'm talking like um the sporting director for nottingham forest let's say I've heard from a U.S. men's national team player that would have the freedom to say whatever he wants to me, and then he said that Gio's fine, like the attitude's fine. Yeah, like there's no cool attitude. Guy. And he's a cool guy. I, 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 the times that I've met him, I can't imagine. I mean, look, he has <laughs> on the field sometimes, he has a bit of an attitude, but in like a funny way, you know, like screaming at players or whatever. I like that. I don't, I, I've never heard anything from anybody who actually knows that there has an attitude problem. I think also, in the Bundesliga, they tend to because they don't like uh, prima donna players in the Bundesliga. And if they do get them, they leak it to the press. There would be a story in the German press if he had attitude problems. Yeah. There's never been anything that ever came out of the German press was always very positive on Gio. It's the American press that has pilloried him. Yeah, I think it's I think it's bullshit. I don't think it's an attitude problem. It was what? mainly to protect Greg. That's what it was at the time. It One was thing I would I would say, and I heard this from somebody, an owner actually of a top five league team, that his dad is not doing him any favors getting as involved as he does and i would say having met and i know a lot of us men's national team fans there's no surprise to anybody on this podcast that's listening to this but i would say to him if he can if he watches this, somebody sends him this clip because i've met him a couple of times i have a lot of respect for him not only for what he's done for the, in the past on, on the field but off the field i think he's put together like an incredibly tight awesome family they travel together i've met that family they're awesome geo's like seems to me to be raised like the kind of kid that you'd want to raise you know and so as a father and as a player and as a man i have total respect for him i think he's doing his son an absolute disservice getting as involved as he does i know for a fact because i've heard it that he's doing his son a disservice for getting as involved as he does especially at dortmund and, and beyond i don't know what it is this helicopter parenting thing but geo is a man i've met geo he's a man he's not a boy he doesn't need a helicopter parent and he's getting married he's a man i would just say like with all due respect claudio if I see you again, I hope you don't hold this against me because I like you and and everything I just said I think makes it clear that I'm not saying this from a perspective of of you know trying to I don't know say something negative. But I you're I think you're doing him a disservice. You have to back off, my man. You have it's out of love, and I'm sure everything you're doing is intentionally great and out of love. But please, like. 
Do you I think that Gio about. though needs to stand up for himself to his dad and when say, "Listen, when you're, when you're how old is Gio? 20? 21. 21. 21. I don't know, man. I think it's hard. Right this year. Yes, I do think he needs to. But I mean, let's be honest. It's easier for the dad to back off than the son to step up. For sure, but you it's your career that's at stake right now, right? That's what's I think, happening. I think it's both. Like for some from somebody who really cares a lot about Gio and his career and somebody who has a lot of respect for for his dad, a lot of respect for his dad and that family. Dude, just freaking the, the the problem is for him to stand up, he has to think his dad is on the wrong. It doesn't mean he thinks that. That's the problem. Well, I'm tell, I've heard I, I'm just telling both of them if they're listening to this that I heard from a, an owner of a top five league team that no team wants to deal with his dad. So he's doing you a disservice. And this is coming from, like I said, someone who has mad respect for Claudio and someone who really cares about Gio's career. That, that's my two cents. Mm -hmm. It's funny how these great USMNT players from the past either become media stooges or like helicopter parents. It's like so disappointing. Or, or, or some of them go crazy too outside. But, but it, I mean, to Claudio's defense, even though he's done seemingly some dumb shit for Gio's career, he has his family seems to be incredibly tight knit and well raised and loving and like I mean as far as like what I can see from what matters being a parent, a plus. But yeah. from a manager's perspective or what do you want? No, like D minus. Maybe he should be just a parent then. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, generally it doesn't work out when relatives are involved as their kids' agents. Yeah. It, it almost never works out. Um, okay, let's move on from Gio. So wait, wait, do you guys agree? Like, do you have, do you want to set a goal oh. assist? No, no, I don't want to set a goal assist. <laughs> no, I don't, I, I don't know goal. where he's going to be playing. I, I just think for Gio, it has to be a season where he is in a club. It could be Dorman. I don't know where it's going to be, Dorman or if he leaves, where he is a starter. That's the first thing. Injury-free starter and gets a meaningful amount of goal contribution. Because the thing of setting a number is he could go to a team also where – Maybe he has to defend a bit more, right? And and that's fine. That'll help develop his game. So maybe he gets seven goal contributions in the season. Maybe he's taking set pieces, and then the goal contribution goes up to 15 goals. I think the, the thing is he has to become a starter somewhere, and he can't end the season with, like, one okay. goal and two assists. He has but to hang end on. With Being a starter, at, if he stays at Dortmund and he starts half their games and comes off the bench in the other half, he's a regular contributor because – he may not start over um, what's his name, Julian Brandt, right? Julian Brandt might be the starter half the time, and he might be the starter at the ten. Well, but well, my point is, I don't know if he's staying at Dortmund, so I don't want to put a number because I don't, I don't know what if but he goes. No, no, I'm not saying for I'm saying to be a starter because let's for me, say, being say like, a regular contributor would still be a success. Yeah, I agree. At Dortmund, regular contributor, seven, eight minimum goal contributions. At another like mid table, Liga or or wherever, starter. Um, perennial starter, 10 goal contributions. That, that, yeah, that would be my... yeah, I, I, I mean, sure, if, he, yeah. if he starts half the game for Dortmund and the other ones, he comes off the bench consistently, that's okay. I still think because of the talent he has and what we expect from him, and he turns 22 in November or October or something, 22, he's not an 18-year-old anymore, needs to be starting somewhere. Like at some point you have to be – it's not like basketball that you're the sixth man of the year. Like you, you get a lot of minutes off the bench. You need to – be starting somewhere well, at Dortmund, if he starts 15 games and comes in another seven like that's fine yeah that would be fine yeah. but eventually he has to become a starter for them at some point and he may never be a Dortmund starter that's okay True. I don't know it man he's so good he's so good I don't understand why not I don't I get it so. he's the most bewildering player on the team to me yeah no so, same like the shit that he does for the USMNT and 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 I see him on the field at Dortmund like He's putting in through balls that are elite level through balls. You know, I don't yeah. understand why he doesn't get more PT and it's not his attitude. So I don't get it. I don't know soccer well enough, but I don't get it. I do think there's a lane. I think he, he I, I mean, even just watching today, like I was watching him on the field. I think his aggressiveness off the ball really does need to improve. And I mean, both with his defensive work and pressing, but also his movement into space. I mean, too often, he's, and as a 10, it can be tough because they'll sometimes double team him. I was watching him, and he's pointing out, like he's, you know, he understands the game. He's pointing the next pass out. Go here, go there. But sometimes I want him to check into space to demand the ball and then to not be so passive with it. Sometimes it's a layoff to the side, and you, okay, I understand that now. But next time, can you turn with the ball and can you look for that ball in behind? I just think if you're fighting for a spot at a club, it is incumbent on you as a player to be more aggressive to demonstrate what you can do. 
And sometimes I think, I'm not saying it's an attitude problem, but maybe it's his style of play. Maybe it's just who he is as a player. It's too passive. And so I can see why certain coaches might not love that. I mean, we've seen that with other players in the past, like Rikel me, like, um, yeah. And please, I'm not comparing Gio because it, it, it just always gets taken out. of. I'm not saying Gio's Riquelme's level. Yeah. Riquelme was one of my favorite tens of all time. But a, a comparable example is um, there's a player called Paulo Henrique Ganso that plays for Fluminense. When Neymar was coming up, it was Ganso and Neymar. And Ganso was the better prospect. And he's a 10, doesn't defend as much, kind of slow. Went to Sevilla, flopped, and eventually he worked out in Brazil with like a coach that really liked his style, but it was like very unique. And then I'm not saying that's Gio's case, but that, that could be why, like when we don't understand why is he not playing, that's probably why. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see, but he needs to have a big season for sure. One of the most interesting upcoming seasons for any player that I'm, that I, I'm looking forward to like seeing what happens. Especially because Pulisic's going to play at the 10 for Milan. So all of a sudden, new national team coach might look at that and go, hmm. That's the rumor. Is that a rumor or is that like? No, he's been practicing. He's been playing him. there in preseason. Yeah. So we'll get to Pulisic. But first, let's finish. The last one is just Jordan Pifok. He's not really. Real quick, Gio, I would just say, is, is a, not one of the guys that goes out. And he's usually with his dad and his girl and like kind of more family oriented than along with Chris than almost any of the other guys, um, which I suppose is obvious from my comments. And, and seemingly just a really good, I don't want to call him a kid because he's a man now, but I mean, just a really like seemingly like really nice, like the kind of person that you'd be proud of to raise your son that way. Yeah. I'm going to skip over PFOC because I don't think he's really relevant to the USMNT discussion anymore. Um, let's move on to Italy and begin with Christian Pulisic. I mean, he's going to be playing as a 10, it looks like. A new coach. He's coming off his best ever season for Milan. Is success replicating that? Who wants to go first here? Anyone. Okay. Um, to me, success for Pulisic this season is over 20 goal contributions, continue to be healthy. He got, what, 21 last season, right, goal contributions? 20, 26 total. 26 total. Yeah, so I'll say keep it up like that. Because, again, he can have, like, 20 goal contributions, and it can still be a very good season. It doesn't have to be 26 or yeah. 20 or 30. Above 20. Above 20 goal contributions, healthy season, and this time, win a trophy. Hmm. I'll add a caveat of be more effective against the better teams. Because oh, yes, last yes. season, all of his goals and assists came against the lower level teams. And they kind of made fun of him for it. Still yeah. a very good season. But to add to, can he now be more dangerous against the Milans, the Romas, the Inters, the Juves, you know, the Napolis? Yeah. That's it. I agree with all that. I don't know if there's too much I can add. I'm just saying I, I am so excited to watch Milan because Musa and Pulisic and Leao is always fun to watch, and it's just a fun team to watch. So that's one of the players. I, those two are the two of the players I actually get to watch a lot because they're on the same team, and it's a fun team to watch. So I'm really looking forward to that. I'm curious how they plan to replace Giroud. Did well, they get, didn't they sign? Um, they was signed it someone. Was um, it they, they signed. Uh, I'll, I'll look it up and I'll tell you. Was it Morata? I just pull that out of my ass. Morata? No. They okay. signed Morata. They signed oh, Morata. They did? I'm okay. pretty sure. But yeah, yeah. okay, if they sign Morata, I'm I'm very curious to see how that goes. Then. I mean, he he played in the league before. I think Morata's a fine signing for their goals and objectives. I, I don't think. Chukwueze on the right. I, yeah. I'm yeah, curious how Fonseca handles this team. Because Giroud is great, but he was also like old. Amazing, uh, though. Like, to still play at that level at hit 40 years old is incredible. I mean, look. Yeah, they signed Morata. They kept Jovic. So, Jovic will probably be the backup. Morata will probably start. I mean, look. There are no excuses. Spain just won the Euros with Morata. You can utilize Morata in a way that he's useful. There are sure, no excuses. Sure, sure. Um, do you have anything on Pulisic as a player? Who? Me? You. you. As a, you mean personally? Or yeah, honestly? personally. Or as a oh, guy. Yeah. Sorry. As a guy. <laughs> Probably like one of the harder guys to get to know. I've spoken with him a handful of times. I mean, obviously like super nice, chill, kind of what you'd expect guy. Um, I mean, I, I have nothing negative to say at all. I, not that I would if I did. But, you know, harder to get to know. Doesn't go, not one of the party guys. Um, I think it's, it's probably because he's so, he's like probably more famous than the other guys. And, and he's also naturally a little bit reserved. So he's more to protect. And he's also naturally a bit reserved that he's harder to get to know. 
and I'm not like one of his good friends, so I, I can't comment on anything other than saying it's been really fun to even like, he's always really nice and cool that, you know, when I'm there. And I think that's, that's really nice of him. So I'm just happy that I get to like hang out with that guy. It's pretty fun. Yeah. It's funny that we finally get a player like Pulisic, you know, <laughs> best in two for, for me, still the best ever American we've ever produced. And he has zero off field swag, <laughs> like zero, like this is America. We want our stars to be larger than life. Right. And, and I think a larger than life American star would be very good for soccer in this country. And our best player has zero aura off the field. I would say there's goods and bads. I would totally agree with that, that, that he doesn't have like the level of swag that you'd maybe want to be the face of us soccer in the sense from a marketing perspective. I agree, but he's also not going to be the guy who gets caught with a gets pulled over drunk driving with a hooker you know he's calling out neymar did you just call out neymar <laughs> so, i mean there's good to, like if there's goods and bads to, to that yeah i mean i would trade Pulisic for neymar just to make that clear weston mckinney is our next guy on our list <laughs> no joking. weston's in the same place as geo in my opinion <clears throat> what do you mean in what sense in the sense that he needs to have a very good season wherever he is, wherever he ends up. Uh, but he's coming off his best season ever. Gio's coming off. A That's true. Season. Okay. That's fair. The difference is Weston McKinney had a, a worse summer than Gio, in my opinion. He was one of our worst players. And the allegations of his self discipline have been there for years. And, and they're very obvious at this point. Yeah. So, what does he want to be? He's turning 27 in September, right? He's not Gio's age either. He's turning 27 in September. Oh, I didn't realize he was that old. Or 26, I'm sorry, 26, 26. Okay. Turning 26 in September, he's entering his prime. The thing for Weston McKinney now needs to be, what are you going to be over the next five to seven years of your career? Because it's kind of up to him. When we see a serious, disciplined McKinney can be very effective for a top, top team even. But a, a McKinney who's lazy and undisciplined and not looking after himself, it's a problem. And it's like, come on. All right. I think we're going to agree with all that. But let's let's lay some barometers. He's obviously, it seems like he's out at Juve, although they said that before. But let's just assume he's out at Juve. Um, where, let's say, my, my definition of success would be starter, like has to be starting pretty much every game. You can't go from that at Juve to like not that anywhere else. And at least at least mid table top three or four league um, and serious contributor, you know, like, like one of the better players on the team. Yeah. I would like even one of push it a bit higher. I would say like at least an Europa league side, right? Like He's going to Fiorentina, league. it seems like. Okay. Europa league side. Yeah. Constant he has to start for them, has to con and contribute on the field. I'm not going to put a goal contribution number, but contribute because Weston's contribution on the field is more than like goal contributions. Sure. Get a few assists, score offset pieces like he used to do a lot, but more of like one perform, be a locked in starter and look disciplined. Look, look like the Weston McKinney we saw early in the season with Juventus. He was in shape. He was flying. And then later in the season, he started to slow down. He even kind of got like became, didn't get benched, but he was playing a bit less. Right. With he Allegri, got yeah, he got benched. Yeah, he got yeah. benched, and then he came into the summer. And I'm sorry, anyone that questions this, he was out of shape for the Copa America. And don't say that he's, it's just his body type. No. We've seen him skinny. We've seen him in shape. So that that was not an in shape McKinney. We've seen it before. If we hadn't seen it before, then sure, I would fall for that. But no, we've seen it, uh, and, and that's what it is: consistency. Because he seems to like get in good form good shape and then just kind of like, like stay there just stay there um it's part of your job unfortunately as a professional athlete to take care of your body so hopefully weston gets that it looks like he's out of juve this time tiago mota does not want him there and last time i think he got a chance because like paul pogba was caught with um steroids what was it again something like was, that was it betting or, or a drug test he failed? no no it was like a drug test for like steroids or something yeah i don't know and then and then they they needed west and so they pulled him in for preseason and he played well and allegri kept him um so, so we'll see we'll see but I, I think he's leaving juve the question is where does he go it looks like fiorentina i don't think that's a bad move league that he knows has to start has to play well no so europa league? League? are they europa league Fiorentina. I'll check, Pete. You can keep yeah, going. I'll check. I'll check. I would take it a step further. I would say if you're playing for a Fiorentina type team, you should be a major contributor, 
right? I agree. I the agree. way he was at Juve. I mean, 10 top assists to me is a major contribution. Top three player. I they didn't it. qualify to the Europa League. In uh, some ways, that's good. So now you don't have midweek games. So that means every weekend you better show up sharp, fit, and a major contributor for that team. Um, it'll like be interesting if Tanner goes there too. I would like for him to elevate his game to elite. And not to say I'm not going to talk shit and say he's not elite, but I mean, I think he has the, the potential to be one of our absolute best players. Top three. Yeah. Um, just a correction. Yeah. They're not in the Europa League, but they're in the Europa Conference League. Oh, no. <laughs> it's like worst of both worlds. You have to play them. I know. It's, you have to play them, but they're terrible yeah. games. <laughs> Uh, okay, well, I, you know, definitely there will be game time. Available. Real quick on Wes, I would say he's like the ringleader of the party crew to, to the extent that it was like, what are we doing after this? Well, Wes has something lined up. Like, he's that yeah. guy, you know, obviously. Super fun guy to hang out with. I think every team could use a Wes, but no team should have more than one or two Wes's because then you can have problems. That's yeah. kind of how I would describe Wes. But, like, super fun guy to – and really, really nice. I've got to know him decently well. Really fun guy to, to hang out with. Like, good attitude. But he is – you know, his own, his own man, like he's, his, he's had a big character and no one's going to put his character into a, a box. I don't, you know, maybe like a, maybe in, to, to some extent, you, you know, he would be better. He would be benefited by like a big name coach because I don't think Burhalter really could corral him. You know, he might be uncorrallable, but. Well, then a, then a big name coach that. would go, then you're not fit. You don't play. That's what I'm saying is maybe he would benefit from, a um a big name you know yeah high profile coach but uh yeah super super dope guy and definitely like the opposite of Pulisic maybe in, in some ways but you know it's cool that the team has different vibes from different players and I think it would be not as fun of a team to be around if West wasn't there yeah um Eunice Musa and I want to start on Musa and saying this my two big complaints about Musa at Valencia were this in the final third terrible and also very, very passive, okay? Once he made that move to Milan, I think he's made strides of progress in not being so passive. In midfield, especially when he starts dribbling with the ball, he can be very dominant. He still has not made much progress in the final third. His final ball is terrible. He doesn't score goals. He, he gets into dangerous areas and then does nothing with it. So what I want to see from Yunus Musa this season is improvement in the final third. And that doesn't necessarily mean you need to have a bunch of goals or assists. Mm. I need to see quality. Final good ball delivery in the final third. Score a few goals. Get some assists. Be a contributor in the final third. That's the main thing I want to see. And start half the games for Milan. I think that's all. I think that I agree with all that. Yeah. And and maybe score one banger. One. Yes, he's got so damn close. He's always he's the king of almost scoring bangers. Get one. We just want yeah. one. I will say like he seems to have added that to his game. Musa is one of my favorite guys. Probably one of the guys that I that I talk to the most on DMing or whatever. Um, I, I think he's added to his game this this low powerful distance shot from distance that he he probably has the best on the team on the U.S. men's national team at shooting from thirty yards a low. <clears throat> powerful shot and i think he's kind of out of that and i have tried to encourage him to to whatever extent that matters but i have gone out of my way to try to encourage him to to do that to become more offensive and to rely on that shot because it is like the most powerful low shot i've almost ever seen in soccer there's few players i think they can do it he did yeah. that at valencia a few times remember he would hit those sometimes and it would he's almost go in he's been doing i think he's had two off the crossbar like the guy he's gonna start scoring i think i yeah. think he needs to have three or four goal contributions I think he needs to improve everything you said, uh, Pete. Like Gio, he is just 21, but turning 22 in November. So, you know. I think he's one of the most exciting talents on our team. I think he's. I think he has the physical attributes to be a top three player on the U.S. Men's National Team. Um, yeah. I think I, if he can add that final third. If game. that, if that, yeah. I agree. I think that's what. It, um, the last thing I'll say is when I was talking to these guys at the airport. One of the owners of a top five league teams, when I because I'm always like, well, you got to get an get an American, get an American. You know, that's my pick. <laughs> and they were interested. Like, it, it is real that they were because I think a couple of them were like, yeah, I mean, it's kind of it's it's good to have it's good for us from marketing perspective to have an American. We've thought about getting an American. I heard that from a couple of people, so that that's real. That's pretty cool. Two of the people, the only name that came up twice was Yunus Musa. One of the owners and one of the sporting directors both were like, we have an eye, eye, eye on Yunus Musa. I actually texted him like, bro, you you are earning a reputation in across Europe because I can. Can tell you leak what club? 
or country? Mm -hmm. What country is this club? One was uh, Liga, and one was Prem, not like the Liverpool level Prem, but okay. Prem. Yeah. And one was Liga. Um, so people have their eye on Musa. It's not just me or us that ha that think that he has a really high ceiling. So he, I he mean, if it. it's if it's Liga, I have like two guesses, but I'm not going to put Brett on the spot. No, here. no, don't. But I hope he stays at AC Milan. I, it's really fun to watch him with with Pulisic and. Yeah. You know, Same. I don't want to be watching mid-table league. No, That's please, so less French league for our players. It's such an awful league to watch. I agree. Um, let's move on real quick to Tanner Tessman. I won't really do Busio because I don't think he's relevant. Nasty. Wea, 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 you skip Wea. Oh, Wea, I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah, Wea. Gosh, what do you guys think? I mean, I think Wea, very quickly, uh, play a prominent role, I would say, for Juventus. And since Thiago Mota is saying that he likes way as a winger and as a forward i would hope this would be a season where in goal contributions if he's getting consistent minutes playing as a winger and a forward try to get eight to ten goal contributions i'd say 10 is the minimum yeah like if he's playing for juve and and tiago mota seems to like him and he said multiple times this guy's a forward this guy's a winger the goal contributions have to come this season like you're not playing as a fullback it has to happen that yeah. that's what i'll say about way i think this could be way as he, everything's lining up for this to be his best season ever, his most meaningful yeah. season of his career. So I'm excited for him, and I really do hope that he gets eight to ten goal contributions and becomes a perennial starter. And that would be huge. To come to to like making that impact on, on a team like Juventus would be awesome. They're going to play four two three one, looks like, and he's going to play on the right wing, which is where he plays for the national team. So <clears throat> deliver time yeah, to deliver for him. The, the manager likes him. He's on the right team. Yeah, right position. Right Everything. And he's 24 now, right? So it's not, again, it's like... At least, right? And Chiesa's gone. So that's less of a winger to compete to. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm saying, like, this. everything's been laid out on a silver platter for him to, like, have the best season of his career. So he just has to seize it. Yeah, 100%. Uh, Tanner Testament, I guess he's on the fringe of the national team. I do hope he gets a move away from Venezia because I think he's going to be mostly defending for his life down there. And it does sound like Fiorentina might be interested. I think just be a go to Fiorentina and show that you can hang in the Serie A because we haven't seen that yet, right? Yeah, I don't have much to add on tenor. He, I, I didn't watch. Just being honest, I. We lost you, bro. I went mute for a sec. I know I cover the Americans abroad every weekend, but I didn't really watch the Serie B, the second division of Italy last season. I would just follow yeah. highlights and see how he's doing, and based off stats. And highlights it looked like he did well but that's the second division of italy now we have to see pretty much what you said p if as long as he can hang in the city look like he belongs i would consider that a successful season wherever he is even venezia i've yeah. only seen him in the, like pretty much the olympics and some of the u.s men's national team and he seems to, to be you know legit uh, also the american ultras guys Martin Al american ultras talks shout out um love him so you know and i, I respect their opinion so i do think that he's got maybe potentially Bundesliga quality. It'd be fun to find out. Yeah. 